Pastor JJ gave me some instructions and he said, Trina, do not make today a science class. And I said, I'm gonna do my best. But you know, y'all pray for me because I don't know if I'm usually like this, but when he told me that all of a sudden, I got all these great ideas for science classes. I wanted to come in here with a lab coat and I wanted to have Petri just dishes and uh, little scientific charts and everything everywhere. I saw a whole little layout of what I was gonna do, but I, I have to be obedient, right? So this is not science. I'm just preempting you. This is not science, right? But it is gonna take you back to the beginning because I need to show you some things to bring you into your future. Is that okay? All right, so let's start in Genesis. Now, uh, you don't have to stand for this because I'm going to jump around from scripture to scripture. Um, and let me preempt this by saying I was reading an article and the article said that one thing you have to know is that the first work is always a prototype for that that follows. And so this is why I love Genesis so much because when times are just wrong, when things just don't seem right and we can't figure out how to map our way around, I like going back to the beginning because the beginning tells me what God meant for it to be. Um, and, and God is not dreaming an illusion, uh, but he is creating realities. When God was creating, it wasn't just a dream that he had. It was a reality for you and me. Uh, so then God created the universe and that everything that he brought into existence, that provides the material for human work. So, so I need to show you this because I want to establish a pattern and a prototype. All right, so let's go to Genesis 1 and 11. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields or produces seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. I know the Bible uses some words. So I just want to break it down. Here we see a prototype. God spoke to grass and he spoke to ve vegetation. And he told it to sprout up and produce seed. He spoke into creation and uh, he spoke to the fruit trees. And he says, the fruit trees, you must have seed in yourself. Y'all stop buying fruits that don't have seeds in it, side note. It's got me questioning, where's the seeds? Seedless grapes? Seedless watermelons? Is it real? I told you, this is the prototype. So if anybody try to get you to differ from the prototype, you got to question where it's coming from. Then in the 20th verse, God says, let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. God created sea creatures and every living thing that scurries and swarms in the water, every sort of bird. He produced offspring of the same, that each of them produced offspring of the same kind. Then he blessed it and said, be fruitful and multiply. What does fruit have in it? Thank you. Then in the 27th verse, God says, so God created man, in, or the scripture says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. What does fruit have in it? Very good. So now we've established that vegetation, animals, birds, beasts, fowl, and humans all have one thing in common. And what is that? Seed. 
Every living organism has seed. Say, I have a seed. My mic wanted to go out for a second. For all intents and purposes, the kind of seed that I am referring to today is not necessarily the seed that produces child. But what I'm talking about is a spiritual seed that produces harvest. I'm switching it from the, from the natural sense to the spiritual con connotation of seed. Uh, remember, I talk you, took you to the beginning so that you can see the prototype. You can see it in the natural. But there is also a model here in the spiritual. And for that scripture, we can go to uh, the second part of Galatians. Or you don't have to go there. But the second part of Galatians 6 and 8 says, But he who soweth to the spirit shall reap in the spirit. So the logic behind the prototype says that in order to sow in the spirit, I must have seed in the spirit. So then to me, that is proven that in fact, you can sow in the spirit and reap in the spirit, just like you can sow in the natural and reap in the natural. Uh, and that can be good or bad. You know, Pastor JJ said last week, if you want to uh, reap peace, you have to sow peace. Uh, but if you sow hatred, you're going to reap hatred. If you sow love, you're going to reap love. Likewise, if you sow nothing, you will get nothing. So I want to show you, just because I feel like the need, I have to reinforce this concept, how things happen in the spirit according to how you sow. Um, this is going to show you that even if, when you sow naturally, you can reap spiritually. And I'll show you Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve sow disobedience. Now the repercussions of Adam's disobedience was slated to be death. You remember God told him in the very beginning, if you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. However, when Adam got caught, he did not physically die. When God caught him in the garden and he, he questioned him and Eve, there was no death. There was no physical death. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you trace Adam, he lived for 930 years after that, or a total of 930 years. Now, God does not lie. There was not a physical death, but there was a spiritual death, proving that your actions, have, your, your natural actions can have spiritual consequences and deathly outcomes. There was a spiritual separation that happened between God and Adam. God and Adam were no longer linked like they were because sin came in and separated them. Uh, the fact that Adam did not die does not mean that there was not repercussions to his actions. You've read Genesis, so you know that God told him some things that he would have to reap because his, uh, of his actions. But then what that happened is Adam exposed himself and essentially mankind to the dangerous and the controlling powers of obeying your flesh. Therefore, inherently, we are going to have to learn the skill of killing our flesh so that the original connection and the original seed can come forth. Ladies and gentlemen, in this sense, you are Adam and he is you. Now, we are still paying the penalty for Adam and Eve's decisions. It reset the prototype. It reset the course of life. It gave us a new prototype. And because of this new prototype, now you have the responsibility and now you have the choice of whether or not you're going to obey your flesh or whether or not you're going to obey God. And your temptations, your, 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 your disconnection happens in the form of temptations. Uh, you, you have to sacrifice, sacrificially kill your flesh so that the spiritual seed can live. Now, I don't know if y'all remember, but Pastor JJ brought a watermelon in here last week. Carrie, is my bag down here? I, I think inside of there, I placed a bag of seeds. Not in that bag, in the, the big part. Y'all, my bags are so big. Y'all forgive me. I love a big bag. 
I got a little flesh problem with bags. I love bags. And so uh, in there, it's, but, but he bought, he, he brought the watermelon here last week so you can see it. Um, and that watermelon flesh is no longer available. I killed it. That watermelon did not stand a chance. I killed it. And watch this. It had to be consumed so that the seed can be exposed. The moral of what I'm telling you is that something has to die so that the seed can be exposed. It was going to die whether I ate it or not. It only has but so much of a shelf life. And here is what I'm telling you. You only got so much of a shelf life. There's a seed inside of you. But in order to get to the seed, something's got to die. Now we have to learn the concept of sowing ourselves. What do you mean, Pastor Trina? Sowing yourself is both sacrificial and it's both beneficial. Let me tell you, pimping ain't easy because now you have to become the farmer that also sows yourself. Eek, my God. You have to sacrifice your outer so that your inner can be exposed. 1 Peter 1 and 23 reinforces this concept. He says, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring of the word of God. Verse 24 says, for all flesh is like grass in all of its glory. It's pretty, but it's all flesh is like grass, like the flowers of the field. And here it is. The scripture says, for the grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord, that's the seed inside of you. The word of the Lord, it lives and it stands forever. Meaning that if you, if you have the living, imperishable seed inside of you, which is the word of God, whatever is perishable on the outside has to die. Listen. There's nothing you can do about this. And this is what I love about it. Because a lot of y'all would think about this and be like, mm, I'm not sure I'm ready to die. And trust me, I'm not talking about a physical death. I'm getting ready to show you what you got to die to. And you probably some of y'all going to wish it was a physical death. But it's not. We are living sacrifices. That's why some of you, when you go to bed at night, you say, God, I don't want to wake up. I want to die. And he says, no. You know why? Because the scripture tells us, the scripture, John 15 and 6 says, uh, Jesus is saying, you did not choose me. I chose you. I anointed you that you should go bear fruit. You already have the seed. He's telling you to go bear fruit, that your fruit should remain. That way, whatever you ask, the father in my name, I will do it. He gave you the seed, a command for the, he gave you the command for the seed. He also gave you authority to use his name to produce the seed. But let me ask you a question. How are you going to bear fruit and fruit that remains when you won't kill and expose the seed? Let me show you why the concept of seed is so powerful. All you need is a seed. All you need is a seed. All you have is a seed. But some of us discount the power of a seed. Media team, I want you to put the seed on the screen. I hope that doesn't gross anybody out. <laughs> but the way God made a seed is that seeds are self-contained systems that hold inside of them everything they need to get through the process so that you can commit to the assignment. Inside of your seed is muscles. Inside of your seed is girt. Inside of your seed is stick to -itiveness. But you have to make the decision to sow the seed. Otherwise, your seed becomes pointless in this plastic bag, just as pointless are you, as you are in the pew, not sowing yourself. 
you have to commit to the assignment. You can't see it on surface level, but inside of the seed, there is great power. Media team, go to the next side. I want you to believe what is on the inside of you. See, we can learn a lot from a seed. And, and for some of you, this is going to help boost your confidence because if you really believe that you have power, oh, that's not the slide I want. I'm sorry. You go to the next one. If you really see, if you really believe the seed that you have inside of you, you won't fight the concept of dying to yourself because you would know what is inside of you is of greater value. If you think about it, most people don't go to the store to buy watermelon seeds. They go to buy the watermelon. But in order to get to the watermelon, you have to first start with the seed. Somebody started with the seed. What I'm telling you is what's inside of you has to be of greater value. And you have to be okay with that. You have to know and be strong enough to still be me, but realize that there is something on the inside of me that is greater than I could ever be. And if I would do the favor of planting and rooting myself, something can be exposed. Something that God wants to be exposed. Then you can have your pinnacle, your Oprah Winfrey aha kind of moment. And you can realize that it's bigger than you. And you won't be intimidated by it, but you would be motivated because of it. But remember, the only way you are going to see what is inside of you is that outer layer, that fleshly desire has to die. You have to be great enough to be great, but humble enough to die. John 12 and 24 says Jesus was predicting his fleshly death. He says, truly, truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, he is only a seed, but if he dies and bears much fruit, whoever, who, if he dies and he, if, because he dies, he bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life will lose it. Now, I know the scripture is talking about Jesus and his physical death and, our, and his willingness or our willingness to be ready to die for him the same way. Uh, but did you know that there's a requirement on your life? I showed you I, I, where Jesus said that he chose you. That means there is a requirement on your life. And you can really start practicing this now. It's called sacrificial living. Be willing to give up fleshly desires so that the greater you can come about. Um, if you love your life so much that you are not willing to die for your own fleshly desires, there is no way that I can get you to die for Jesus. <laughs> Listen to me, and I'm going to preface this by saying, because I, you know, I'm not judging nobody, because trust me, Trina got her issues. I'm not judging nobody, and I know how people get, they get real sensitive, uh, but because I'm your pastor, um, I'm going to challenge you, right? Um, I'm going to give you what is bigger than you. Because I don't want you to depend on you. I want you to depend on God and what he put inside of you. If I give you something that you can accomplish, God doesn't get any glory. But if I give you something that is too big for you to handle, then you'll have to say, Pastor Trina, I can't do this but for the help of God. And that's where I want you to be. I, as your pastor, have to raise the bar. I can't let you stay here. I have to set the bar here. Now, I know that sometimes you won't make the bar, but I want you to keep on. I need to set the bar high so you can keep on leaping for it. I don't want you to get stationary and set right here on this level where it's easy for you. I want to challenge you so that I can build your faith and build your muscles to understand that it is not about you. Got to challenge you to live better, be better, better, better physically, mentally, spiritually, all of that. I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to make you feel uncomfortable uh, at your current level because I want to push you to your next level. But what I found out is people always say, oh, I want candidness, Pastor Trina. I want you to tell me the truth. I want you to give it to me until I say that one thing. And you say, nah, she ain't have to say all of that. She ain't had to get in my business like that. And, and, and now you mad at me because I'd raised the bar on you. But honey, that's what it's about. You ever see a little kid that gets frustrated with something, but in taking it away from them, you teach them principles. 
If you always let a child do what a child wants to do, they will have no rules. They will have no standard. They will have no guidelines. But as a parent, I have to cap you at something so that you understand what it's like to live by some guidelines. Now, you can't play ignorant. Ignorance is not a thing. We, we're not going to be ignorant. I say all of that to say this. There are some people who cannot quit smoking, and you know it's killing you. If you are unwilling to quit smoking, and you know it's and I say unwilling, because if you're really willing, you could do anything you want to do. Right? And there's help around. Uh, but, it, it, but what I'm trying to get you to realize, if I can't get you to do the natural things that you can do, there's no way that I can get you the spiritual things that you don't want to do. All right. Uh, they didn't like that, Lord. You told me to say it, and now they don't like it. Every time it get tight, I'm going to just... the world are you gonna prepare to be die for the sake of Jesus you know what y'all I was doing I'm, I'm in school don't clap and I was doing a research paper and I chose to do the paper on the legalization of marijuana we're security okay because here's my stance it should not be legal recreational marijuana you want to fight me come on I'm ready to kung fu I posted it yesterday everybody was kung fu fighting here we go do y'all know or do y'all care what this stuff does to you I told you I'm raising the bar. It's ruining your brain, your heart, and your lungs. And I know you're sick of me talking about this, but I have an idea for you. Call Pastor JJ and tell him that you don't want me to preach no more because I, I, I don't think it's going to work because I tried. I asked him myself and he wouldn't let me quit. But uh, you can try if you want to. He's, uh, I know y'all sick of me saying this. I asked God. I asked my husband. I asked my daddy. I asked Apostle Stevenson. I asked everybody if I could quit. They said no. So I figure if I get up here and get on everybody's nerves enough, somebody would sit me down and then I'll get what I want I'm telling you you are wrecking your brain you are wrecking your brain with recreational marijuana uh-huh and it's slowly killing you make it make sense see because you, you're young now you think you're infallible until you get older and your heart start beatboxing and pop, 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 palpitations and stuff start going right and then they're gonna turn up with some research 10 years later and say oh by the way we shouldn't have done that we got some conspiracy theorists in here who think they already know they trying to kill us You heard the scripture, the grass is going to wither and the flower is going to fade. No judgment. I have to show you this, and, and now we really have to pause because I know the people who do smoke marijuana is like, why is she always talking about marijuana? So I got to show you in the Bible. Because uh, if you don't know, then you won't sow, and then you won't grow. So now I have to show, and I have to let you know. So let's put up. Let's put up. Let's put up Galatians 5. Put up Galatians 5. Come on. Let's show them. They're going to be mad in a minute anyway. Uh, you're going to be mad at what the scripture says. Uh, come on. Let's, let's, let's read this. I like my version better. It says, I'm sorry, I didn't give you all the version. It says, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Somebody turn around and say, you obvious. You think you hiding, but you obvious. We see you. Here's what we see. We see sexual immorality. I didn't say it, y'all. The word did. 
If anybody needs to get up and jump, no judgment, no judgment. Sexual immorality, anything, and I want to I want to take my time because I want to explain it to you because I don't want I don't want you to be ignorant of these things. Sexual immorality, any kind of sex outside of marital sex, sexual immorality, die in the name of Jesus. Impurity and debauchery. You know what debauchery means? It means extreme indulgences in bodily pleasure. No, devil, you're not going to let this mic go out. Extreme indulgence. I got a big mouth too. If I need to yell, I will. Uh, extreme indulgences in bodily pleasures. Let it marinate. Come on, I ain't in no rush. I didn't want y'all to shout on purpose. So we could go slow. Idolatry and witchcraft. We see you. We see you. You're obvious. Y'all stop studying witches. Especially when you ain't even been saved for 10 good years. You ain't spoken the Holy Ghost for six good months. And now you want to study what witches do. You don't understand what you are opening yourself up into. And I have to say it in public because it's so many people doing it. I don't know if I'll get to you privately. It's witchcraft. It's satanic. And you have not built yourself up enough to handle the repercussions of what that carries. You think it's cute to wear crystals and to mess with sage and to all of that because it's trendy. But I'm telling you, as sure as my name is Trina Harrison, it is straight from hell. You will mess around and have yourself clucking and not knowing what to do and going crazy and not understanding why. All because you wanted to study what a witch was. The blood of Jesus! Now, if that's what you want to do, take it on out of here. All right. I got another one for y'all. Because I, I don't want nobody to feel judged. Because I'm really not judged. Because maybe you didn't know. So I'm just telling you because maybe you didn't know. And so now I have to let you know. All right? And so if you feel like I'm picking on you, good. Because you picking on me when you bring that in here. Hatred. You going around saying who you hate. You know, my, my, y'all, I'm not fussing. I'm going to calm down because the last clip I saw, I looked really angry. And I don't, I don't want you to think I'm angry. I'm really a sweet person. I told you I'm from Shelton, Connecticut, and I'm a sweet person. Right? But hatred, See? discord, can't get along with nobody. And see, here's the problem. We've glorified fighting. You want everybody to know how good you got a clap back. We're proud of this. We go around boasting about it. I'm quick with my words. Some, somebody say something to me, I know how to get back at them. And let me tell you, I get it so it hurts. I ain't even got to use my hands. My mouth is lethal. Woo. Die. Yeah. All right, I got another one. Jealousy. Saints, oh, I know it's in the room. You ain't got to tell me. Remember, the scripture started off saying, you obvious. Obviously, you a little jelly. Tell the truth, shame the devil. Fits of rage. These pop-offs, and all of a sudden, you flip from one to the other. I don't know who you are. I don't know, I don't know who I'm talking to today because you, you be switching on me. <laughs> right? Selfish ambition. I want, I want Pastor Trina and Pastor J 
JJ to see what I could do so I could be promoted, so they could, I, I, if they could just see me, or if they could just hear me, if they could, y'all, can I be honest with you? <laughs> can I tell you something about Pastor Trina? Nah, I won't, I won't. I feel like when you do that, I have to turn my, you know, I was learning how to, and I'm not calling anybody in here names, and maybe, um, Sister Liz, you can vouch for me. I got a little puppy, and they said when the puppy is discriminating bad behavior, like when they really want attention, the best thing you could do is turn your back, ignore it, because then the puppy will learn that's not the behavior that gets my attention. Now, I'm not calling, please understand, y'all, I'm a really sweet person. I love everybody. But that anxious spirit to get in the front, I can't. I, can't, I don't know. I told Pastor JJ, maybe he could, maybe he has more patience for, I, I don't. I, I don't, all right? I just, okay, we can leave that. That was just me being honest. It was just me being honest. And if I'm wrong, I'm asking God to check me on any of these. Because I'm not telling you that some of these don't come in my head and in my mind. I'm, I'm putting myself out there because we all have to. All right. So that selfish ambition, that jealousy fits away, dissension and factions. Factions is taking sides against others. And I'm not going to even talk about you who go to somebody else so that you could be on their side so that you won't be on their side and that now we got clicks and sides. Okay. Um, envy. Drunkenness. I don't have to say too much about that. Y'all know. Orgies. It's in the Bible. I don't want y'all to think. Because is it, is it, it's, it's in my version. In that version, I, it's my fault because I didn't tell them what version, but it's in the Bible. It says orgies and the like. I don't know what's the like. I'm scared of the like. How much worse and nasty can you get? Okay. The Bible goes on to say, this is Paul. He was very angry. Paul was angry when he was talking to the Gentiles about this. He said, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have been crucified. They have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. And then it says, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited. Let us not become arrogant. Let us not become proud. Provoking each other and envying each other. See, these things keep luring you back into bad habits because you have not crucified. You have not been crucified with Christ. And if you have not been crucified with Christ, then you ain't delivered from these things. The things that he went to the cross for. So either you don't want it or you don't believe it. Either way, it is rejection for what the one on the cross did. And if you're rejecting him, he's going to reject you. To add to this, you know, I found out um, that when I crucify my flesh, it teaches me discipline. Oh, y'all don't like no discipline. People don't like the word discipline. Um, but it teaches you discipline. I, I, I lost 44 pounds. Clap for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I did it, not so that you could clap, but I just wanted you to do anyway. That's the fleshly side of me. Um, I, 
I, I did it because I, it taught me discipline and it taught me how to sacrifice things that I really, really want so that I can live and the seed inside of me can live. If I'd have stayed the size I was, I would probably be stretched out here instead of standing up here. So for me and my life, I had to have a form of discipline. And trust me, take a cookie out of my hand if you want to. That would make me fight. But I had to sacrifice. So you can see the Trina that you see today. I had to sacrifice my own desires because I don't want this mic. I don't want to be standing up here. I want to be sitting over there, and I want my husband to be here. Yeah. But I had to sacrifice what I want. Somebody asked me one day, they say, you want to jump out of a plane? I said, I do, every Sunday. This is me, jumping out of a plane. Scared as I could ever be. I don't want to be here in front of y'all, but I had to sacrifice what Trina wants because I said, Lord, no longer my will, but your will be done. And that's the same thing I'm telling you today. If you are willing to sacrifice the things and the desires, or if you're not willing to sacrifice the things and the desires, there is no way that you're going to be ready to die and leave this earth for Jesus. We all say we love Apostle Paul, but can we be like Apostle Paul? Can we really suffer for the sake of Christ? Uh, by the way, the Bible tells us to glory in our sufferings. It says because suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope never disappoints us. Because God has poured out his love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So there's a building process to you. I'm not just telling you to do this because I want you to just, just suffer. I want you to suffer for the sake of Christ because it is producing a character in you that you need from him. You need those things from him. And all of that builds you. It makes you better. And a lot of us are looking for expansion, we're looking to multiply, we're looking to build, we want to rebuild, we got all these things that we want to do, we want to grow, we want to grow this, we want to grow that. But let me tell you something, you can't beat God's system. What I, God is sitting there saying like, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for you to die. Contrary to what people may think, God does not like flesh on parade doesn't like it and we've made idols out of our desires I'm sorry I don't have a pretty little message for you today I want to take my time this is not something that you're gonna go out laughing about and I understand that um, but I'm feeling very John the Baptist -y these days and I just feel like saying repent for the kingdom of God is at hand all that flesh has to fall and it has to die. There's two things you have to do. You have to fall and you have to die. And see, some people think when they fall, it's for their embarrassment, but it really it's not. It's for their betterment. When you fall, don't stop there. Die to the thing that made you fall. Starve the desire. If you don't die there, that means you just fell and took a little nap. You, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't die. It's still in you. What you want to do is still in you. you. You ain't changed until it hurts. Dying hurts. There's nothing about dying that feels good. So yes, when you tell yourself, I'm not going to do that, that I'm, that's a nasty habit, I don't want to do that habit anymore, you think the enemy is just going to leave you alone? No, the temptation grows. It seems like it gets bigger when you say you're not going to do it. It's like all of a sudden, it's, like it's so hard to do. Why? Because that's the trick of the enemy. But you got to let it hurt. Let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. You can tell when people are really sincere and when they have a repentant, repentant heart, when they fall and then they die. That's why they say when you apologize to somebody, you know, it, it really don't mean nothing until you change. We need to see changed behavior. Changed behavior marks the fact that you are really sorry about what you apologize. Apologizing is nice, but what you're going to do after you apologize? Something has to die. 
something has to die inside of you. Uh, uh, my mother, you, she's very old school too, I guess. And when, when people used to get sat down in the church, she just didn't let you sit down. If you got, now I'm not sitting nobody down. I mean, but I'm saying, like, I'm just giving you an example. Don't, don't worry, I'm not sitting nobody down. But when you got sit down in the old church, what they would do is my, my mother would come up to you and she would give you a schedule. She wouldn't just let you sit down. She would say, okay, so you're going to be at church on Tuesday night? You're going to be in church on Wednesday night. You, you're going to be in prayer. It's prayer all week. I need to see you there all week. And then come in my office because we need to talk about what you did. I know you apologize, but I need to make sure that the thing is worked up inside of you. And then you, you, couldn't, you couldn't serve on the praise and worship team if you got sat down. But you still had to be there. You still had to come to rehearsals. You still had to sit there in prayer. You still had to be, you better be there on Sunday mornings and be on time. Because I got to know that you really mean this and not just this. You mean this in your heart and not just this. Yeah, I know y'all y'all don't like the old church. <laughs> y'all like, y'all y'all all right? All right, okay. Just want to make sure you're good. I'm saying it with a smile this time. So when Jave pulled the clip, at least I could be smiling when I see, say it with a smile. Uh, there's a word for this process that we all have to go through, this process of dying and coming alive, um, there's a word for this in the plant world, in the agriculture world, and it's called the process of germination. Germination is the process that a seed must go through. And, and germination happens after a period of dormancy. Um, that means you're sitting there doing nothing for a while like these seeds. These seeds are very dormant right now. But if I put them where they're supposed to be, uh, it's the germination process that's going to make them activate and come alive. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. What I'm trying to tell you is that you are sitting there dormant. There is something inside of you. You got a seed and it's just sitting there in a pew right now. Um, but if you sow those things, if you sow, if you sow your seed and you sow your desires, there is something on the inside of you that wants to come alive. It's the germination process. You've got to strip yourself of the wrongdoing. You've got to strip yourself of the wrong thinking. And you've got to die to your outer layers, layers because I need the germination process to have its full work in your life. Yes, there may be some dark days. And yes, there may be some times where you're crazy and regretful that you ever stepped your foot in the church. I know. Yes, you, you may be the odd man out because everybody wants to do this, that, and the other, and you can't do it. Yes, there are going to be some times that you're like, my God, did I make the right? decision? Did I come to the right place? Did I do the right things? Sure, there's going to be a time of that, but it's all the germination process it's necessary for your germination. I know, I know, I know it may look a different little bit different than what you thought it was going to look. And I, I, I know that every time you put a seed in the ground, you're like, God, I don't know. I don't know if this is the right thing. Is this the right ground that I should be in? Is this the right area that I should be in? Is this the right place that I should be in? You've got to let your seed get in there and germinate. See, here's the thing. Most of us think, and I'm going to help you out a little bit here, but most of us think that as soon as you put your seed in the ground, you need light on it right away. Uh, and, and, and that is true. That has true. But please don't forget and consider the fact that you have to bury the seed. Ooh. You have to dig a hole into the earth. You have to put the seed in the earth, and then you cover it back up with dirt. Cover it with dirt. I want to talk to all the people today that has had some dirt thrown on them. And although the light is shining up here, it's real dark and dirty where I'm at right now. <laughs> Baby, I come to tell you it's a dark and dirty place. But you are right where you need to be for the germination process to happen. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe you'll understand it this way. Uh, 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 way back when, we had what we called digital camera, or, or the cameras were not digital. Now they got digital cameras, but the cameras we had, uh, old school cameras, they had what you call film inside of them. And to make a long story short, in order for you to see the results of what you took, the picture that you took, you had to take the film out of the camera, and then they call it, these are your negatives. And then what they said is, take your negatives and put it in the dark. I don't know. I don't know, God. I don't know if they're getting this. I hope they are. 
I hope they get it. In order for your negatives to be developed, you have to put it in the dark. Woo! Sweet baby Jesus, I feel this. In the dark is where the true images come out. In the dark is where your development comes out. In the dark is your process. Don't you know that even as a baby, you were formed in the darkness of a womb? And then you wonder why God allows all of these situations to happen. You wonder, God, I'm trying my best. I sold and I did what you told me to do. Why is it that I'm still in a dark place? You know what they told us about the film? They said, don't expose it to the light yet. It's not ready for the light. Uh, if you put the light on it right now, you might ruin it. Um, I'm not ready for it to be exposed and I believe that God is speaking parenthetically to somebody and he's saying I'm not ready for the light to be on you yet there's a development in the dark There's some true images that God wants to show forth in you. There's some real gold. They tell me that inside of the film, there's actually pieces of real silver, but you can't see it. It's something that's developed that makes the images come forth. Don't you know that you are made of pure gold? And just because your neighbor does not recognize who you are, it is okay. I'm still in the dark, but don't you worry about it. God's got a plan for me. Woo! It's some dirt on me right now and it's looking real dark down here and I can't even see the break of day. But that's not your assignment to see the break of day. When God wants you to see the break of day, he will expose the light. But right now, if you can't see your way out, please know that it's your germination process. And until you have been fully developed, Things are going to look dark and grim. Things are going to look a little dusty and dirty down there. God said, I didn't cause the darkness, but I'm allowing the darkness to happen. Because there's something inside of you that's coming forth. I kept you in a dark season for a reason. You said, God, I can't see. He said, I know. Trust the process. Trust the process because your seed needs, uh, it needs to be germinated. It's dormant right now. And germination happens in the dark. It's dark down here. But it's dark for a reason. Yeah. It's dark for a reason. Yeah. When you look at your circumstance and you can't see the light, I want you to say, it's dark for a reason. Yeah. It's dark for a season. Yeah. We've been made and do it for a night, but it's dark for a reason. Yeah. I want y'all to cut the lights off in here. You want to cut the lights off earlier? Cut them off now because I want it to be real dramatic. It's dark for a reason. Yeah. Stay right there in the dirt. It's dark for a reason. Yeah. Jesus, God is perfecting something inside of you. It's dark for a reason. Yes, Lord. We've been made and doing for a night, but it's dark for a reason. Yeah. It's dark for a season. Yeah. Stay right there in the dirt. It's dark for a reason. Yeah. I told you I'm taking my time with this because I really want you to think about it. Because it's light in here tomorrow, it's light in here today. But tomorrow when you going through and things seem real dark, I want you to think about it. It's dark for a reason. Yeah. It's for the perfecting of your faith. It's dark for a reason. Yeah. God ordained your darkness. It's dark for a reason. Jesus. Yes, Lord. It's your 
germination process. Woo! Y'all turn the lights on. Turn the lights back on. Yes, Lord. I want you to think about that real good. Thank you. Whoa! Woo! Thank you. Didn't think I was going to make it out, but it's dark for a reason. For somebody, that's the theme of what you're going through right now. God, I don't understand it, but I know it's dark for a reason. And... Oh. You ever heard the old people say that God will give you a song in the midnight hour? It's dark for a reason. Yeah. Yes, Lord. I'm not going to push you. I'm not going to push you. Uh, oh, yay, 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 yay. Germination happens in the dark. The perfecting of who you are happens in the dark. I know you're anxious for the light to come on and I know the burden seems really heavy and I know you're tired and tired of going through what you're going through but the perfection of even your character has to happen in the dark it's dark for a reason and... sometimes you ain't even ready for the light it's dark for a reason and... God said, I got to prepare you for what you're going to see. It's dark for a reason. And I don't know why I feel that the way I do. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Okay, let, let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, oh, my God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But I think that's resonating with somebody. Uh, I think somebody can feel like, Lord, it should have been my turn already. I, I've watched everybody else step before me and I, I've watched people get elevated that should have been left behind because I know what they was doing. And God said, I got something better for you. It's dark for a reason. And... Sometimes he's even saying, prepare yourself for it. I got to keep the lights off right now. It's dark for a reason. And... Uh, what I'm trying to teach you to do is to have joy in the midnight hour. It's dark for a reason. And... Woo. I, I, I'm trying to let it go, but God keeps giving me all these examples in my head. And he's saying, you're still comparing yourself to someone else. It's dark for a reason. And... Uh, he's saying, you're, you're not ready to be as dependent as I, or independent as I need you to be quite yet. It's dark for a reason. And... And sometimes what we don't even realize is that God is preparing help for us somewhere else down the line. And your help hasn't got ready yet. So it's dark for a reason. Hey. Oh. Yes, Lord. Okay. I'm going to leave it alone. All right. Let me end this. I just saw Pastor JJ come in and it made me nervous. So I just got to get myself together. But it's dark for a reason hey. okay. Woo. I'm not my shade. I got a little discouraged last week it's dark for a reason hey. The reason why I keep carrying this on is because, one, I know somebody want me to stop. I told you, I have a hard time when people tell me not to do, to do something. I have a hard time following. The second reason is because I really believe that somebody needs it. Because you be on your job watching everything happen around you. And you know it's time for you to get a raise. And people keep on looking over you. And instead, what I'm trying to do is change your attitude towards your negative dispositions. Of the, of the, you can't control what everybody else do. But you can control what you do. And I dare you... To get a song in your heart. As soon as
soon as the enemy tries to come up and trip you up and make you angry, I dare you to find a song in your heart and say, it's not for a season. Hey. Yes, Lord, I don't need you to be confused when somebody comes to you and says something different from what you heard from God. It's God for a reason. God is, God is preparing you for something different than what he gave the last person. And you're trying to measure up and figure out, well, why didn't I get what they got? And God is saying, I got something totally different and totally custom made for you and it may take a little bit more time and that's why I'm keeping the lights out right now. It's dark for a reason. Hey. Hey. Yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord. You've been getting all this bad news seem like one thing after the other. Seem like you can't even catch a break because after something else breaks, here comes something else. And after you fix one thing, seem like it's a hole in another thing. But I dare you to turn around and look at your circumstance and say, it's dark for a reason. Hey. Okay. <sighs> Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Somebody, somebody got to have surgery that didn't want to have surgery. And you're like, God, I prayed and I asked you to heal this. Why in the world do I have to go have surgery for it? And it seems like the lights are out in the situation and you can't figure out what is going on with your health and you can't figure out what is going on in your body. And God is saying, it's dark for a season, but hey, hey, I am the light. I am the healer. I am the provider. I am the way maker. I am the one that will come and rescue you. I'm trying to teach you a lesson here that if God is for you who in the world can be against you you need to learn how to stand flat foot in the face of the enemy and say I will not cower down I am not a chump I will not be the whip I'm going to take whatever it is that God has given me because I know that it's dark for a season but hey Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. You know what? You know what's crazy about germination? Is in order for germination to happen, it depends on the rotting or the abrasion of what is on the outside. So God, not only is it dark and dirty down here, but now something is rubbing up against me and it's making me so uncomfortable. And you're saying, God, at least you could do is turn on the light. But God says, it's dark for a reason. And I hear you saying it. They just rub me the wrong way. I don't know what it is about that person. I don't know, but it's taking the rubbing. It's taking the abrasion. God is using that. When people get on your last nerve, God is using that to rub that off of you. You shouldn't even let nobody have your last nerve. It's if your last nerve, you need to take it back. And I'm not going to let you disturb my peace because it's dark for a reason. Hey. wants you to stay right there in the dark stay right there in the dark uh, I, I don't know who this is for but I feel like God is preparing a table for you in the presence of your enemies 
He's preparing it while you're in the dark. And you can see the preparation for it because if you're honest, you can see the hand of God in your life. And you've been so busy trying to prove to everybody else who you are. And God said, I'm the one that's preparing the table, not you. Stay in the dark. Let God set up the table for you. Let him, let him prepare everything. Let him lay out his finest china. See, God wants you to have victory in elegance. Woo. I, I want victory in elegance. I want the finest china. Don't come giving me no paper plates. Because see, if it's up to your enemy, they're going to lay out what they, what they use for their own house. I want you to go in Tiffany. Go get me some Tiffany china. Yeah, right in the presence of your enemy. But see, you're going to need to show up. When it's time for you to show up, you're going to need to show up. Don't let nobody run you from where you're supposed to be. Because God is preparing your table here. You've got to be here in the presence of your enemy. And there's so many of us who are running for the enemy. But don't you know that you're supposed to put the enemy to flight? The song is wrong where it says I beat the devil running and I'm so glad. Because the Bible tells me that one can chase. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. I know this is tough to hear for somebody. But God has to break your outer so that he can get to your inner. Because it's in the inner that's the manifestation of the outer. Woo! Okay, come on, sit down. I got one more last thing. One more last thing that I need to give you. Uh, and this is important for your germination process. And y'all know, I don't know how to end messages, so I might just drop the mic and just let Pastor Jay. I already prepared him that he might have to come up because I don't know how to end stuff. Um, I just keep on going and keep on going. Uh, but this germination process is so important because what happens is the roots take ground. Woo. Uh, uh, before the sprout goes up, the roots have to go down. And see, you're asking for light too early because as the roots are taking ground, it's all a part of the germination process. And, and, and what's happening is the roots are looking for water. Do you know what the water is for your root? It is the word of God. You've got to be rooted in the word of God. And all of that happens in the dark. It's dark for a reason. Yeah. Oh, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. And let me tell you when, you, when you get in this position, it's no time for you to sit in the dark and self-loathe. It's no time for you to sit in the dark and have a pity party. It's no time for you to sit in the dark and be in shame about what you did. It's no time for you to even call your friends and get them on this side and on that side and help them. They can't help you figure out why you're out because this is an ordained season by God. So they're never going to be able to answer the questions that you have. They're you're never going to have the solution. Do you know where your solution is at? Your solution is in the word of God. You've got to get yourself together. This is your time while you're in the dark to get yourself together. This is not time for the light to be exposed. This is time for you to deal with your flesh. This is time for you to deal with those negative feelings. This is time for you to put down all the pity partiness and all of the sadness and everything. It's time. It's time for you to gather yourself and get in the word of God. Um, it's not time for you to find your support system. The word of God is your support system time for you to strengthen your roots by the word of God, the word of God, the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Whatever happened to the days when we were in love with the Bible? Woo! My God, I feel that in my belly. Whatever happened to the days where you didn't want to be caught red-handed without the word of God in your hands? You used to take a highlighter and highlight that Bible so much until the pages were falling out. You used to have so many tabs on your Bible that it looked like it was an old historic book that somebody had in the back of their closet because of the fact that you were flipping and flipping and flipping and flipping and you got notes and scriptures everywhere. You need the word of God! Your soul is thirsty for 
spirit. There has to be a craving for the, that's what's taking root. That is what's driving you down. That is what's strengthening you. A plant is only as strong as its roots. Elder Carlene was praying the other night, and I declare we did not talk to each other. But she prayed everything that's on these slides. And she started talking about the word of God. And I just got so weepy because I remember the day when we used to love the word of God more than we loved anything else. We used to quote scripture, know where it was at, know the book it was in, know who wrote it, know everything. And somehow or another way, we let distractions take us away from that. We let modern technology disrupt us and get us off course. And so that's when the enemy planned his sneak attack because he knew that you were at your weakest because your roots weren't thick enough. Whew. Ephesians 5 and 25 through 26 is given a description of how Jesus or how a husband should love his wife. And it ties to Jesus and how he loves the church. And how he says, uh, it, uh, it says that he, Christ sanctifies her with the clean, cleansing her by the washing of the water through the word of God. Psalms 119 and 10 said, thy word have I hid in my heart. That's me sowing the word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Because when somebody get on your nerve, the cuss word shouldn't come up. The word of God should come up. See, y'all tell on yourself because I know what you're doing. What you do in the dark is going to come out in the light. Because when somebody get on your nerve, instead of quoting the scripture, you're quoting something else. So I know you ain't been in your word. Because only what you put inside of you is what's going to come out. Okay, y'all tired of me. Y'all tired of me. It's all right. My pastor's here. Until he tell me to sit down. I don't know, because I'm going to sit down before he say it. Uh, but here it is. Here it is. I meditate. The scripture of Psalms says, uh, I meditate. I will meditate on the precepts. That is the water that you're, that you're watering, the precepts. You're putting it in your body. And I have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statues. I will not forget the word. I was talking to an individual, I don't want to say her name because I don't see her in church, even though I don't think she'll care if I say her name, but I was talking to her and she was telling me how angry she was. She was very, very angry. Something happened and somebody threw some dirt on her. No, I'm not talking about physical. Y'all ready to fight. I'm talking about spiritual. Come on back. Come on back. <laughs> Didn't we talk about that earlier? Come on back. Somebody metaphorically threw some dirt on her. And she was in a dark season in that moment. And she called me crying. And she said, Pastor Trina, I'm just angry. And I feel it. I feel it. And I was caught off guard. I wasn't prepared for somebody to call me that angry. But you know what came out of me? The word of God. And by the time we ended the conversation, her disposition had changed. She started to see it from a different light. It was not because of Trina. It was because the word of God. And why do I feel that there's somebody dealing with anger in that same level in this room? Come to the altar. If it's you that have an anger issue, I need you to be, see, see, what we have to do is we have to start releasing and denouncing these things. We say we want deliverance, but deliverance happens out of your mouth. It is what you believe, but it happens out of your mouth. You have to learn how to start denouncing anger. You have to learn how to take on the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your help. God never meant for you to reside in such anger. God never meant for you to live. Yes, he gave us these feelings as our emotions. We have emotions. God gave us our emotions for a reason. It is to make you aware that there is something inside of you that needs to be plucked up. It does not need to manifest. And for somebody in here, anger has been manifesting for too long. And it's showing in your job. It's showing in the way you, you, you talk and you interact with others. It's, it's showing in how short your temper is. What is that? The root of it is anger. And God wants to dismiss it. Come on, say it. I renounce anger. I let it go. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I will not hate. But I will forgive. 
I will let anger go. Now, anger, release yourself in the name of Jesus. Release it in the name of Jesus. I will hold on to it no longer. I can't change the situation, but I can change me. And I refuse to reside in anger. If anger is not you and you're dealing with something else, I want you to come up. I want you to come up, not because I'm going to lay my hands on you, but I want you to make a profession. I want the enemy to know that you are not afraid of him, nor the tactics that he used, and you will make a public statement that I denounce it in the name of Jesus. It will not have its hold on me. It will not grip my heart. I will forgive the people who did me wrong, even if they do not ask for an apology. I will let it go in the name of Jesus. Come on, renounce it. You've got to open up your mouth. I don't want to lay my hands on you because I can't do it for you. You've got to be in a position where you're ready to do this for yourself. I am ready to make the confession for myself. I am not going to let the enemy have control over my life any longer. Say it. I need you to say it. I need you to say it out of your mouth, not in your head. Say it out your mouth. There is, there is, pot, there is, uh, there's, there's something about your confession. Your confession. You need to say it for yourself. Renounce it, whatever it is. Say, God, I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go in the name of Jesus. I'm releasing it to you. I'm casting my cares on you in the name of Jesus. It will not hold me. God is saying that some of you need to get rid of memorabilia. Whatever reminds you of what made you angry. Whatever reminds you of what makes you bitter. God said, remove it from your house. Get it out of your house. There's some demonic things that have been in some of your houses that has seeped in and controlled your attitudes and your mind. God is saying, get it out of your house. Purify, purify, purify your home. Sanctify yourself in the name of Jesus. God, we let go of anger. We let go of disappointment. We let go of resentment in the name of Jesus. We let go of the bad choices that we made. Some of you are looking at me. Looking at me, at me is not going to do it. I need you to say it. When you're tired of being tired, when you're fed up with dealing with the same thing, when you're sick of this thing controlling you, you have got to speak up for yourself. Ah, somebody has had a problem speaking up for themselves because somebody has muzzled you for most of your life. And so now you find it difficult to say what you need. But that is not God. God is a God that is waiting for you to open your mouth. He's given you the power. He's given you the power. He's given you the power. He's given you the authority to use his name against these circumstances and against the weapons of the enemy. You can use the name of Jesus. So if you don't even know what else to say, you start saying the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus be over it. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Whoa, cleanse us, God, cleanse us, cleanse us. Let us let go of the anger. Let go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Years and years of pain. God is saying, let it go. Let it go, let it go. In the name of Jesus, release it, release it, release it, release it, release it. Hurt, release it. Disappointment, release it. In the name of Jesus, confuse it. Release it. Confusion. Release it. In the name of Jesus. It will not control you. In the name of Jesus. From this day forth, you've got the victory over it. You've got the victory over it. You've got the victory over it. You and I the same. The same God who delivered yesterday is the same God that will deliver today. You will know that you were before is the same deliverer that dwells with us now you never changed and you did not change your mind about me you did not change your mind about the 
plans that you have for my life. You remain the same. You will never. The Lord God that stands, the Lord God that reigns, the Lord God that rules. You will never, you will never. The same power that dwelt before you is the same power that rules my life now. You will never change. You will never. Past mistakes are gone. Forget yesterday. Forget yesterday. There's a new seed inside of you. Oh, namaste under the newness of God. Be birthed inside of you. In the name of Jesus, it will not hold you stagnant. It will not make you dormant. God is less saying, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I know it hurts. But it was dark for a reason. It was dark for a reason. But oh. Yes, Lord, deliver him, Jesus. Do not let it plague him another day. You are not a God that looks at our yesterday, but you threw it in the sea of forgetfulness. You don't hold anything over our head, but you've given us a fresh start. You've given us a new seed, and we thank you that anger will not control him. In the name of Jesus, we break the family curse of anger. In the name of Jesus, we break the curse over the family. In the name of Jesus, you are a generational curse breaker. You are a generational curse breaker. Yes, in the name of Jesus, renounce it. Renounce it. Renounce it. In the name of Jesus, break yokes. Break yokes. Destroy yokes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, no, my shame. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah! What the number of you do? You will not go crazy. You will not go crazy. What the number of you You will not lose your mind. What the number of In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You will never. Jesus, renounce it in the name of Jesus. Renounce it in the name of Jesus. Renounce it, renounce it, renounce it, renounce it in the Namaste. Let it go. Yeah, Namaste. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, you won't let these babies have a conceit. Ah, thank you, God. the difference. 
between God and man, he will never change.
you can lift your hands and you will never change. doing something in the room. right where you are, begin to cry out unto him. Without being DJ, without being told what to say. Allow him to heal you in this moment. Allow him to sift and change. Father, we submit ourselves to you. We get the wall out of the way. We're saying, Father, have your way in our hearts. Yeah. We're giving it to you now. We give it to you now. We've taken down the resistance. We will not resist. Father, have your way in us now. We've heard what you've had to say concerning us. And now we submit to you. There's been a call for purification today. There's been a call for holiness and righteous living. God told, Joshua told the children of Israel before they crossed over in Joshua 3 and 5. He said, purify yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders among you. Some of us are looking for the crossover, but we need to be purified first. Come on, lift your hands now. Who will ascend to the hill of the Lord? He that had clean hands and a pure heart. Father, purify us now. Purify us now. We lay aside every weight that, so, that does so easily beset us. All the stuff that usually distracts us. 
all the stuff that usually gets us out of the way. We lay it down and we say, Father, we are submitted. It's not all sin. Some of us is, is hurt. Hurt that we've chosen to hold on to. Trauma that we've chosen to keep in our pocket. We release it now. We release it now. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. We release it now. I know what they did. I know what they said. But we release it now. This will no longer stand in the way of what God has planned for me. I release it. I submit it to you. Who is that? Who needs to submit it to him? Lift it. You lift your voice now and say, Father, I give it to you now in the name of Ada Bahatoya. I give it to you now. It hurt, but I release it. It, it, it scarred me, but I release it. I, 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 I will no longer hold on to this. I get up. I will no longer hold on to this. anybody needs to be saved if you need to be saved come now if you need to give your heart to the Lord come now if you need to surrender your heart to the Lord come now listen there is there's a few things happening in the world right now. Right now, there are a few things happening. Um, there, I've, I've talked about it on Thursday. There's a spirit of lawlessness in the, in the world right now. Uh, we prayed against school shootings on Thursday. There was a shooting at Bowie State University on Saturday. Lawlessness. We're, and I said every time we see it, we're going to keep praying lawlessness and then we've all heard that there is a war in Israel and many have tried to many have said that what is happening is prophetic because we know that when it was time when it's time for the savior to come there will be some stuff that happens in Israel let me let me make this clear no man knows the day nor the hour when the son of man shall appear however there are signs the Bible says there will be wars and rumors of wars. So that means it, the fact that there are wars is a sign that Jesus is soon to come. Now, am I trying to scare you into salvation? No, because it's the enemy's job to use fear. The enemy uses fear to scare you into doing what he wants you to do. I want to invite you into the love of Christ. I want to invite you into the safety of Christ. You know why? Because we that are believers, we're not afraid. You know why? Because what does love do? Love casts out. Perfect love casts out fear. The perfect love we speak of is in Christ Jesus. So if you want to experience safety, the Bible says the righteous run into him and they are. So if you want to experience safety, true safety, come now and receive the covenant of being a part of the family of Jesus Christ. If you know you need to be in line, if you're unsure, if you say, well, am I saved? This is the time to be sure. If you need to be saved, come now. There's no condemnation. No one's going to look, there, look down their nose on you. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So no one has a right to look down on you. However, we all will cheer if you give your heart to Jesus now. I'm waiting for somebody. I don't know who it is. Somebody needs to give their heart to the Lord. Do not sit on this opportunity. Ask your neighbor, are you saved? All of this would mean nothing. If you're, if you're not in line with Jesus Christ, if you need to give your heart to him, come now. I believe somebody needs to give their heart to him today. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody feel led to join the church? You can come now. I should say that nicely. Anybody feel led to join the church? You can come now. If you feel like this is the place where God is calling you to, then come. No other place is the right place if God said this is the place. We will lovingly welcome you into this house if, you, if the Holy Spirit has led you to do so. If God said that this is the place, come now. We want to welcome you as a member of this church. Anybody feel? Any, there you go. There you go. Anybody else? Come on, come on, come on. Anybody else? Come on. Anybody else? Am I, am I being greedy? No, I'm not being greedy. Holy Spirit's still speaking. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Y'all, y'all too quiet. Y'all too quiet. Make some. Come forward. Hello. Both of you. What's your name? Alexa. Amaya. Maya. Everybody give God praise for Alexa and Maya. We are so grateful that the Lord spoke to you and told you to be a part of this house. We're not perfect, but we love him. And because we're submitted to him, if you walk this journey with us, you will never be the same. Something's going to stretch inside of you. Like, why, why am I praying like this? Why am I waking up like this? It's because you've been attached to something that God is doing something with. And God is doing something in you. Welcome to All Nations D.C. Come on, make some noise for them. Follow that young lady right there, Alexis. We love her. Hey, y'all. Y'all good? Oh, God is still moving. So, oh, you joining too? Oh, you can't get saved. Thank, oh, thank you, Lord. God is not. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should ever have to repent. I knew somebody, come on, give God a praise because he's, somebody shout, he's still saving. Anybody else? I, I know I'm being greedy, but okay, let me say this. My favorite part of the book of Acts that people would probably think is Acts chapter 2 is really not. You know why? Because Jesus was talking to the disciples and they were, the Bible says, Acts chapter 1, I believe is verse 6. He said, the, um, the, the disciples kept asking him, are you going to come? Is this the time you're going to give your kingdom? Um, this, is this the time now? And he said, um, don't even worry about that. What you need to worry about now is making disciples. He said, and you will be my, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you will be my witnesses. So Jesus don't want you to worry about when he's coming. He wants you to worry about who you're reaching. We reach this sister here. What's your name? Shadell. Uh, Shadell, I'm, I, this is my favorite part of service. You go to Howard? So, obviously, you've seen a lot of ceremonies, right? You've seen graduation ceremonies. You've seen wedding ceremonies. Um, a lot of what you see in these ceremonies is what, how salvation happens. It's all by confession. You go up and you say, hey, I believe, yeah, 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 I want to get married, yeah, you're going to be my husband, you're going to be my wife. It's all by what you say. I don't need you to fall out to be saved. I don't need you to have an emotional experience. I just need you to make the right confession. So there's somebody here that should be down here with you, and I'm, and I'm going to challenge everybody to say this confession with you because somebody's going to get saved with you today, all right? So say this, follow, follow me in saying this. Uh-huh. Yep, yep, yep. God, so now we're talking about marriage, right? The Bible says he's what? Obviously, you've been saved before. And he's married to the backslider. So now it's just time to rekindle your relationship. So let's say it together. Father God, I believe you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins. I believe that his blood atoned for every sin I've ever committed. I believe that Jesus died 
But I also believe that Jesus rose from the grave. And because he rose, one day I will rise also. I believe that because of the blood of Jesus Christ, I am saved. Now somebody give God a shout in here. This is the quarter bounds mother. She gave her heart back to the Lord today. Can we give God praise for her? All right, so y'all are so quiet. I know Pastor Trina just preached and it was so awesome, but I would expect you to be louder now. But it's cool because in heaven, there's a whole cel There's a whole celebration happening. Can we join them for just 30 seconds and give God a praise? Because the devil lost two more. I said the devil lost two more. I'm already saved. I love it. Uh, any, did anybody make that confession just now and they believe God just saved them? If that's you, come on. Let's shout with you. Anybody made that confession just now? I, I just believe that God is still saving. I, I, uh, see, come on, Braxton. Come on. I see you. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Somebody give God a praise because he's saving young men too. Oh, y'all too quiet. I said he's saving young men, too. Where are the people that's been praying for the men? Shut up, devil. You ain't gonna have the men of this generation. Shut up, devil. You will not have the men of this region. We're claiming them back in Jesus. Braxton, you already know there's a calling on your life. In the name of Jesus, I release everything that's been called. Back in you now, in the name of Jesus, you will be who God wants to be by all the And I claim a heaven of protection right now in Jesus' name. I'm sorry. I said God is saving men. The devil is a liar. God still saving. God still saving. God still. God saving. God still. God still saving. God still saving. So. Saving. Wait. I just want to make sure that you make the confession with everybody else. So I want you to shout, "I am saved," real quick. I am saved. What's your name, brother? The devil's mad because Joe got saved. Somebody, can somebody give God a praise because he's still saving? <laughs> but God don't lie. Then God don't lie if he's said it. God still said it. God still said 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 it. God still said it. Shut up, devil. God still said it. 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 God
second time here? Well, Joe, you already made one great decision today. I'm not gonna put no pressure on you, but if you wanna have a church, Joe said he wants to join the church. So, where's Alexis? Oh, Alexis, y'all, Miss Ann got both of y'all. Go with Miss Ann, she's gonna take y'all to the next step. I don't know who's gonna get excited about that. God still, 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 don't, don't sit down. We about to go home. Uh, did you enjoy Pastor Trina today? Can we give God a praise? We're going to go home praising God. Listen, I got to announce two things. Every Tuesday morning at 6 a.m., we're coming together for prayer online. I need everybody to be in prayer. This is a season where we cannot relent on our position in prayer. Every, 6 a, every morning, Tuesday morning at 6 a.m., we're coming together for prayer. Thursday, we're having family Bible study. All the men meet me and Brother Jason on Zoom, and AP going to preach with me. I'm, we're going to do a little bit of something. On Thursday at 7 p.m., the women will be studying with Pastor Trina on Thursday. And then we'll have fam all the young people will have um, their own link where they'll be able to study as well. The, all the stuff is in the know. All right, Friday. Friday, Friday, Friday. I need y'all to hear this. Um, y'all know, well, first of all, how many like Vincent Bohannon? Y'all love Vincent Bohannon? Vincent Bohannon is going to be in full concert here this Friday at 7 p.m. sharp. It's totally free. I need everyone to be here. This is why I'm going to let you, uh, uh, okay, be careful with the stream. Uh... There's, I've been told that there is some stuff happening in the music industry that the devil gets glory out of. But I've received several prophetic words over this past season that God is going to use what is on our lives, specifically on my life and what, I, what I'm connected to, to bring purity back to the gospel music industry. I'm not, I'm not saying I want it. I'm saying this is what God said. And I'm going to walk in it, but I need you all to walk with me. So every time there's a musical gathering, we're going to come together. We're going to pray. And God's going to get the glory out of our music. I, I, oh, y'all so quiet, see, because y'all... Y'all used to everybody talking negatively about music, but I believe we're coming into a season where God is going to get glory out of what he's doing in gospel music. So Friday night, I need you to come together with me. Join me in prayer and worship. Our choir is backing up Vincent Bohannon. Do you love our choir? This Friday at 7 p.m. sharp, meet me here. Um, let's lift our hands. Everybody stand to your feet. Saturday night. Saturday evening. I know we got a lot going on. Where are all the married couples in the house? Saturday, we have a fireside chat with all the married couples. Our beautiful and wonderful marriage ministry leaders, Bernard and Cartia Morgan, have put together an amazing experience. And I need you all to meet us, all the married couples to meet us on Saturday at the fireside chat. All right? Father, we thank you for all that you've said and done. Thank you for speaking through your woman. Thank you for speaking through your daughter. Thank you for speaking to these. Thank you for saving. Hallelujah. Thank you for filling. Thank you for delivering. Thank you for restoring. Thank you for all you've done today. We will not allow the enemy to steal the seed that you planted today. 
the seed, which is the word of God. We will not allow the enemy to steal it, but we will let it sit in our hearts and grow. And we will be, a, we, not only will we reap a harvest, but we will be the harvest. We will bring a harvest of souls to you because you require souls. That is what you require of us. And we will bring and we will minister and we will teach until everyone we come in contact with hears about you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be all the glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Everybody in the house shout, thank God. Thank God. And it is so. I love you. God bless you. Life now is sweet and my joy.